The following presentation on Revelation 11 is my own work and is not based on religious doctrine or anyone else's research. In the previous videos, we looked at Revelation 11 verses 1 through 6, which told us the two witnesses are the two churches, which the Bible further verifies represents Israel and the followers of Paul, which corresponds to Judaism and Christianity in the present day. We were told these witnesses would be two out of seven assemblies of people, and today Christians and Jews make up two billion out of seven billion people currently living on the earth. Revelation 11 has told us so far that the multitude of all nations will walk the holy city in heaven for 42 months, which is three and a half years, and the two witnesses will have influence on the earth for 1260 days or years. During that time, there will be no rain of fire and brimstone, and the waters, which represent people, will be turned to blood. We previously left off at verse 6, which says, These will have influence, and heaven will be shut, that it will not rain during the days of their prophecy, and they will have power over the waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Then verse 7 says, And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. So, we'll add that here, and also here. The beast kills the two witnesses at the end of their testimony. In verse 3, we were told the two witnesses will act as prophets for 1260 days, and we know days can also represent years in the text. So verse 7 is telling us the beast will kill the two witnesses at the end of the 1260 day or year period. So we'll add that to this chart as well. The beast makes war with the witnesses and kills them after they finish their 1260 day or year testimony. Then verse 8 says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Zechariah 4, number 3 here, told us the seven candles are the eyes of Yahweh that go forth over the whole earth, and Revelation 11, number 2 here, told us the two witnesses are two of those seven candles, which means the two witnesses go forth over the whole earth. That makes sense because we're also told they are the Jews and Christians. In Matthew 24, number 10 here, we're told the gospel will be preached for a witness, or among the witnesses, unto all nations. Jesus said, go over the whole earth to preach the gospel. This confirms that the Christians and Jews are witnesses over the whole earth. This map from Pew Research Center shows the areas of the earth that are primarily Christian or Jewish in red and dark blue. The predominantly red portion appears to be the great city where the two witnesses now walk. Verse 8 tells us their bodies will lie in the streets of this great city, spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, at the end of the 1260 days or years. The next point in this verse is the reference to the Lord. Notice several other Bible translations of verse 8 translate that phrase as their Lord as opposed to our Lord. The texts are clear that Yahweh is the Lord of the witnesses. So verse 8 is saying the great city is where their Lord was crucified. But notice the word translated as crucified, number 4717, also means destroy its power utterly. And the word was is not in the original text. So this is saying, And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord's power will be utterly destroyed. And we'll add that translation here as well. Our examination of Revelation 13 already clarified for us that Yahweh is the beast with seven heads and ten horns, and Daniel tells us the beast will be utterly destroyed at the end of the fourth empire. So verse 8 is also confirming that ultimately the power of the Lord of the two witnesses, which is the power of Yahweh, the beast, will be utterly destroyed throughout the great city where the two witnesses walk. Next in verse 9 it says, And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. If the two witnesses represent two billion people, then this seems to be saying roughly two billion people will lie dead in the streets over the whole earth, and no one will bury them. We know days can also represent years in the Bible. So this is saying, for three and a half days or three and a half years, two billion people will lie dead and no one will bury them. So what could possibly happen that would cause that much death? We're told in verse 7 that the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will kill them. And Revelation 9 tells us the bottomless pit is opened by a star that falls from heaven. The book of Matthew also confirms that at the end of the tribulation of the days, the stars will fall from heaven. And Daniel tells us a burning stone will hit at the end of the fourth empire, and that burning stone will be the size of a mountain after it hits. 
Daniel told us this burning flame stone will destroy the fourth beast, but Revelation 13 told us the beast will be given power to continue for 42 months. Now Revelation 11 is telling us the beast will ascend out of that bottomless pit. In other words, the beast will gain power from the asteroid impact for a short time, specifically 42 months, which is three and a half years. Revelation 9 goes on to tell us that after the star hits the earth, an army comes out of the Euphrates River and kills everyone in the region where the asteroid hits. So the asteroid impact leaves many dead, but others will be killed by the army. And Revelation 11 is telling us this will occur at the end of a 1260-day or year period. Matthew 24 also confirms this. After the tribulation of the days, the stars will fall, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man. Luke 17 confirms this as well. Fire and brimstone will fall from heaven in the days when the Son of Man is revealed. So the beast ascends out of the bottomless pit, which is opened by a star that falls from heaven. So the beast cannot ascend out of the pit until the star falls. That means the death of the two witnesses can only occur during and or after the asteroid impact. So, the star falls and opens the bottomless pit, and the beast that ascends or gains power out of that asteroid impact will then make war with and kill the two witnesses. And the people and kindreds and tongues and nations in verse 9 who see the bodies but do not bury them seem to refer to the multitude explained in Revelation 7. We're told they are the multitude of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues that will stand before the throne of heaven. And Revelation 11 tells us the multitude will be in heaven walking the holy city for 42 months. 42 months is equal to three and a half years. So this is further confirmation that the multitude will be rescued at the asteroid impact. We have already been told in multiple places that the multitude will go to the safe place in heaven when the asteroid hits and stay there for three and a half years. Now we seem to be told the two witnesses will be killed at the same time the bride goes to heaven at the end of a 1260 year period and they will lie unburied for three and a half days or years. This matches perfectly the timeline that was laid out in Daniel 12, Revelation 12, Matthew 24, and even Revelation 13. So, that was verse 9. The multitude will see them lying unburied for three and a half days or years. They don't bury them because they're looking at them from the heavenly place. And we'll add that to this chart as well. After the 1260 years are finished, the two witnesses will lie unburied for three and a half days or years. Next, Revelation 11 verse 10 says, And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelled on the earth. The word translated as shall rejoice, number 5463, also means thrive. So it says, and they that dwell upon the earth shall thrive. Then the word translated as over, number 1909, also means before. So it says, and they that dwell upon the earth shall thrive before. But notice in the NAS lexicon, the original word meaning them does not appear after this. It moves from word 1909 to word 2165, make merry. So it says, and they that dwell upon the earth shall thrive before and make merry. And the word translated as make merry, number 2165, also means joyously living. In other words, living joyously. So they that dwell upon the earth shall thrive before and make merry or live joyously and send gifts to one another. Then the word translated as because, number 3754, also means saying. So send gifts to one another, saying, these two prophets. And then the word translated as tormented, number 928, also means vex. And the definition of vex is feel annoyed. So verse 10 is saying, And they that dwell upon the earth shall thrive before, and make merry, or live joyously, and send gifts to one another, saying, These two prophets annoyed them that dwell on the earth. Verse 10 almost seems to reference the Christmas holiday, saying they will be making merry and sending gifts to one another before the event that leaves the dead unburied in the streets. In other words, it seems to say the Christmas holiday will occur before the asteroid impact. If it is referencing the Christmas holiday, then it would also be referencing the part of the world that celebrates Christmas. If that's the case, then it may be giving us both the time and or place of the impact. This is a map highlighting in brown the countries where Christmas is not a public holiday. The gray countries represent the areas that celebrate Christmas either on December 25th or January 6th. 
you can see these gray areas also correspond roughly to the areas that are predominantly Christian in red. So verse 10 may be verifying that this is the great city in red, symbolically called Sodom in Egypt, where the two witnesses walk the earth and celebrate Christmas, and where the dead will lie unburied after the asteroid impact. In addition, it may be giving us a clue that the end of the 1260-year period will occur after the Christmas season. But there's also another possibility, that this verse is referencing the whole time period in which the Christmas holiday was celebrated. A Wikipedia article on Christmas says, The chronography of 354 AD contains early evidence of the celebration on December 25th of a Christian liturgical feast of the birth of Jesus. Then it continues at the bottom, Many popular customs associated with Christmas developed independently, and gift-giving from Saturnalia became syncretized into Christmas over the centuries. Saturnalia was an ancient Roman festival in honor of the deity Saturn, held from December 17th to December 23rd. The holiday was celebrated with a sacrifice at the Temple of Saturn, a public banquet, gift-giving, continual partying, and a carnival atmosphere. It says at the bottom, the popularity of Saturnalia continued into the 3rd and 4th centuries AD, and as the Roman Empire came under Christian rule, some of its customs have influenced the seasonal celebrations surrounding Christmas and the New Year. A number of scholars, including historian David Stevens from the University of Central Florida and Professor Parker Dukami from Tulane University, view aspects of the Saturnalia festival as the origin of some later Christmas customs, particularly the practice of gift-giving. This is an article and video on the history of Christmas on the History Channel website. It says, In the 4th century, church officials decided to institute the birth of Jesus as a holiday. Pope Julius I chose December 25th. It is commonly believed that the church chose this date in an effort to adopt and absorb the traditions of the pagan Saturnalia festival. The custom spread to Egypt by 432 and to England by the end of the 6th century. By the end of the 8th century, the celebration of Christmas had spread all the way to Scandinavia. So Christmas is the modern version of the ancient Roman holiday Saturnalia, and it reached all of Europe by the end of the 8th century, that is, sometime between 750 and 799 CE. According to HistoryToday.com, the holiday of Saturnalia began at the start of the Western Roman Empire during the reign of Augustus. The start of the Roman Empire in 27 BC is, according to the Book of Daniel, the rise of the fourth beast. It's interesting then that merrymaking and gift-giving is mentioned in Revelation 11. We're told the people of the earth will make merry and send gifts to one another before the end of the 1260-year period. Saturnalia, the merrymaking, gift-giving holiday, began at the start of the Fourth Empire, then transformed into the holiday of Christmas during the 4th century CE, the start of the Eastern Roman Empire when Christianity became the official religion of the empire. So Revelation 11 is giving us a clue that the 1260-year period occurs sometime during the Roman Empire. That time period was narrowed down in our examination of Revelation 12, Daniel 12, and Matthew 24 when we found out the tribulation of the 1260 days or years began sometime after the Dome of the Rock was set up in 685 CE. But when we look closer, this clue in Revelation 11 narrows our search for the 1260 years even more. As seems evident in this wiki article, the first common tradition that marks the Christmas holiday among various countries is the setting up and lighting of a Christmas tree. The Christmas tree, then, is arguably the most predominant symbol for the Christmas holiday in modern times. According to Catholic.com, the tradition of using an evergreen tree to celebrate the birth of Jesus began with St. Boniface. A wiki article states that some traditions credit St. Boniface with the invention of the Christmas tree. This legend is mentioned in a number of educational books including St. Boniface and the Little Fir Tree, The Brightest Star of All, Christmas Stories for the Family, The American Normal Readers, and a story by Henry Van Dyke, The First Christmas Tree. It is not known when St. Boniface was born, but he was killed in 754 CE, the same year the Papal States were first established. A climactic moment in the founding of the Papal States was the agreement over boundaries, the donation of Pepin. Pepin led a Frankish army into Italy in 754 and 756. And in reference to the 1260 days, Wiki says, Historicists usually believe the 1260 days spanned the Middle Ages and concluded within the early modern or modern era. 
Although many dates have been proposed for the start and finish of the 1260 days, certain time spans have proven to be more popular than others. The majority of historicists throughout history have identified the 1260 days as being fulfilled by one or more of the following time spans, 312 to 1572, 606 to 1866, 538 to 1798, and 756 to 2016. Adam Clark, writing in 1825, stated that the 1260-year period should commence with 755 A.D., the actual year Pepin the Short invaded Lombard territory, resulting in the Pope's elevation from a subject of the Byzantine Empire to an independent head of state. The donation of Pepin, which first occurred in 754 and again in 756, gave to the Pope temporal power of the Papal States. In other words, 754 through 756 was already a well-known possible start date for the 1260 years. Now the clue in Revelation 11 about the celebration of Christmas during the 1260-year period and the invention of the prominent symbol of this holiday beginning around St. Boniface's death in 754 in the same year the Papal States began their rise to power seems to add credence to that theory. 1260 years added to that time period between 754 and 756 ends in the three-year period from 2014 through 2016. The other significance about the 1260 years starting in 754, 755, or 756 is that it is exactly 70 years from 685 CE when they began building the Dome of the Rock, the abomination of desolation we were warned to watch for in Matthew 24, which was explained in detail in Daniel 11 and 12. The building of the Dome of the Rock lasted from 685 to 691 CE, and the sign described in Revelation 12 occurred in 686. That means both 755 and 756 specifically are exactly 70 years after the start of construction and the occurrence of the celestial sign. From 606 BC until 685 CE were the 1290 years that Daniel 12 says precedes the abomination of desolation. 1260 years from 685 ends in 1945, the end of World War II, when the Jews were released from the Nazi concentration camps and the dropping of the two nuclear bombs on Japan. 70 years after 1945 lands in 2015. In addition, 70 years after both the start of construction in the celestial sign in 685 and 686 ends in 755 and 756, the start of the papal government. 1260 years from 755 and 756 ends in 2015 and 2016. And now Revelation 11 seems to confirm that by citing the celebration of the Christmas holiday, of which the prominent tradition involves the bringing in of a fir tree, which according to legend began with St. Boniface who died in 754. So we'll add verse 10 to our chart here. Those on the earth will thrive before and make merry and send gifts to one another, saying the two witnesses annoyed them. So while this may be a reference to the holiday season within any given year, it is also possible it is giving us a clue as to when the 1260 years actually started. The 1260 years is marked by the celebration of Christmas, of which the predominant symbol was created at the start of the papal government. Next, verses 11 and 12 say, And after three days and a half the Spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. So we'll add that here. The two witnesses ascend to heaven after three and a half days or years of lying unburied throughout the great city. We'll also add that to this chart. The two witnesses ascend up after three and a half days or years. We know days can also represent years in the text, but if the dead bodies are literally resurrected, then it seems this must refer to a literal three and a half day period as opposed to three and a half years. However, a body left unburied would be covered with maggots within a few days, so it seems more likely this event would be an optical illusion of some kind that represents the fact that the two witnesses are not dead but alive in the heavenly place with new bodies, possibly. If the ascension is an optical illusion, then the three and a half days may represent three and a half years. However, verse 13 says, And the same hour there was a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, 
And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. So the witnesses will ascend in the same hour of a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the great city will fall, killing seven thousand people, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to God. We know the remnant are those left behind after the bride escapes. It tells us that in Revelation 12. After the woman escapes, the dragon makes war with the remnant who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony. The testimony is something that is associated with the two witnesses. In Revelation 11 verse 7, it says after the two witnesses have finished their testimony, the beast will make war with them. We're told the dragon gives power to the beast in Revelation 13, so the dragon making war with the remnant in chapter 12 seems to be the same event in chapter 11, the beast making war with the two witnesses. Here in verse 13, where it says the remnant were affrighted after the two witnesses ascend, the word translated as were, number 1096, also means to arise. So it says the remnant arose affrighted, and the word translated as affrighted, number 1719, also means tremble. So this can also say, and the remnant arose trembling and gave glory to the God of heaven. In other words, this may mean the remnant arise at the same time the two witnesses ascend up. In Revelation 12, we're told the woman or bride flees into a place prepared by God for 1260 days or years, and after that she flies to a place prepared by God for a time, times, and half a time. Right here. The time, times, and half a time in Revelation 12 seem to match the time period in Revelation 11, the 42 months, which is three and a half years, because we know the woman in Revelation 12 represents the multitude of all nations. This tells us the woman, or multitude bride, flies to the holy city in heaven for three and a half years. After the bride escapes, the dragon makes war with the remnant who have the testimony. The two witnesses act as prophets for 1260 days or years, and after they finish their testimony, the beast makes war with them and kills them. But three and a half days later, both the two witnesses and the remnant arise or ascend up in the same hour of a great earthquake. So it seems possible at this point that the remnant are the two witnesses. Next, verse 14 says, The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe comes quickly. So the second woe is finished at the great earthquake. Then verse 15 says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever ever and ever. This tells us the third woe and the seventh trumpet sound after the great earthquake. Then verses 16 through 18 say, And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldst give reward unto thy servants the prophets and to the saints saints, and to them that fear thy name, small and great, and should destroy them which destroy the earth. So notice it says the wrath, the judgment, and the reward all occur in the seventh trumpet. So the wrath, the judgment, and the reward occur in the seventh trumpet. Those are codes right there for the asteroid impact and the rescue. Then verse 19, the last verse in this chapter says, And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. The clues here are the temple is opened at this time, and the lightning, thunder, earthquake, and great hail. So the temple in heaven opens during the seventh trumpet, and the lightning voices, thunder, earthquake, and great hail occur in the seventh trumpet. This is a timing code. In Revelation 8, in the second half of verse 5, it says, And there were voices, and thunderings, and lightnings, and an earthquake, and the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. So this clarifies that the voices, thunder, lightning, and earthquake also occur at the start of the seven trumpets. This is explained by the fact that the seven trumpets happen simultaneously with the seven plagues, which we are told occur not only in one day, but in one hour. We'll talk about that in another video. But for now, notice the thunder, lightning, and earthquake occur right before the seven trumpets in verse 5. The first trumpet is hail and fire falling from heaven, the second trumpet is a great mountain falling into the sea, and the third trumpet in verse 10 is a great star that falls from heaven burning. This clarifies for us that the voices, thunderings, lightnings, earthquake, and great hail refer to an asteroid impact. So in Revelation 11, when it makes reference to the lightning, voices, thunder, earthquake, and great hail, it's referring to the asteroid impact. 
Matthew 24 is clear the stars fall immediately after the tribulation of the days, which Daniel 12, Revelation 12, and Revelation 11 all seem to concur is a 1260-year period. The star hits immediately at the end of it. We'll add that here. The two witnesses ascend up along with the remnant at the great earthquake, then great hail and wrath and the temple in heaven opened. This is the asteroid impact, which we're told occurs immediately after the 1260 year period. This means the three and a half days that the witnesses are dead cannot be three and a half years. It must therefore be three and a half literal days. This also means the multitude are only in the temple in heaven for three and a half literal days before the witnesses and remnant join them. Everyone is in the safe place when the asteroid hits, and they stay there for 42 months or three and a half years. That may explain why Matthew 24 verse 31 says the elect will be gathered together at that point. This may also explain why there is a third time period in the text. The timelines in Matthew 24 and Revelation 12 seem to tell us the 1260 days represent 1260 years. The 42 months in Revelation 11 and 13 can only represent three and a half years, nothing else. The time times in half a time, however, is more elusive. In Daniel 7, it says this is the time period that the saints will be given into the hand of the little horn. In Daniel 12, we're told the scattering of the holy people will be accomplished by the time times in half a time, and the woman or bride is in heaven for that time period as explained in Revelation 12. Bible scholars have known for centuries that these three time periods are connected in a special way, although they disagree on how. I propose they are labeled differently because they represent different lengths of time. The 1260 days seems to represent a 1260 year period that started sometime after the abomination of desolation was set up in 685 CE, possibly the period that started between 754 and 756. The 42 months is only equal to three and a half years and seems to be the time period that the beast is allowed to continue after the asteroid impact. In Revelation 12, the time times in half a time comes after the 1260 years, and Revelation 13 clarifies that the beast continues 42 months after the end of that 1260 years when the asteroid hits. Those are the two clear time periods, 1260 years followed by 42 months, which is literally three and a half years. But now Revelation 11 clarifies for us that the time times in half a time is neither the 1260 years nor the three and a half years. Instead, it appears at this point that the time times in half a time represents a literal three and a half day period that occurs right after the 1260 years at the start of the final three and a half year period. If this is true, then this would mean the saints will be given into the hand of the little horn for only three and a half literal days, and the final time of trouble in Daniel 12 will only be three and a half literal days for the two witnesses and the remnant. It would also mean that the bride in Revelation 12 is only in the safe place alone without the two witnesses and remnant for three and a half literal days. Revelation 11 has told us so far that the multitude of all nations will walk the holy city in heaven for 42 months, which is three and a half years, and the two witnesses will have influence on the earth for 1260 days or years. During that time, there will be no rain of fire and brimstone, and the waters, which represent people, will be turned to blood. We're told this time period is also marked by the celebration of Christmas, which may give us a clue about when the 1260 years started and or tell us where the great city is where the two witnesses will lie unburied at the asteroid impact and following war. The two witnesses are the two churches which the Bible further verifies represents Israel and the followers of Paul, which corresponds to Judaism and Christianity in the present day. We were told these witnesses would be two out of seven assemblies of people, and today Christians and Jews make up two billion out of seven billion people currently living on the earth. The world population is expected to reach eight billion by 2025, which means the fulfillment of this prophecy as it appears now will no longer be in effect in 2025. That indicates the final event may happen between now and the year 2024, and that also seems to confirm the timing we've looked at in the other chapters. For more information, the whole series playlist, Bible's Countdown to the Asteroid, is linked here and also in the description below. Just click on Show More to find more links. Thank you so much to those of you making this research possible. If you like this video, please consider providing support. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you next week.